On this video, we're taking a look at our NCAA B Best Picks for the games which are happening on Saturday, February 12, 2022. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. For our third spot on our the top 3 NCCAB list for tonight is Memphis vs Houston, Houston minus 10. Like their opponent, the Houston Cougars feature a lineup with several players capable of sharing the scoring load, as five players are averaging at least 10 points per game. So far, 67.0% of the team's points have come from these five players. The leader of this group is Marcus Asser, averaging 17.7 points per game. On the season, he has shown a willingness to shoot the ball from long range, as 43.0% of his shots come from downtown. So far, he has connected on 44.0% of these attempts. The Cougars' second leading scorer is Kyler Edwards adding 14.0 points per game. Thus far, he has a field goal percentage of 39.0%. Down low, Josh Carlton is the team's top rebounder, grabbing 6.4 per game. Houston's 12-game winning streak was snapped on Wednesday when they lost to SMU 85-83 on the road. It was just the third loss for Houston and only their third time allowing an opponent to score 75 or more points. SMU was able to score 1.20 PPP and make over 52% of their three-point shots against the Cougars in a performance that can be labeled as an outlier for the Houston defense. The Cougars have the fourth-best opposing effective FG% percent in the country and are rated as the 14th most efficient defense by Ken Palm. Further, they have held opponents to under 0.90 PPP this season even with the injuries to Marcus Asser and Trayman Mark. Returning home should provide the Houston defense with a nice boost on Saturday. The Cougars hold opponents to 53.1 PPG on an astounding 33.2% shooting from the field in their home games and have held their previous five home opponents to an average of 53.2 PPG. Memphis comes into this game on a four-game winning streak but finds itself in a tough spot facing Houston off a loss. Coach Kelvin Sampson always seems to have his team ready to play after a loss, especially when the Cougars return home after a losing on the road. In fact, since the start of the 2019-2020 season, Houston has won by double digits in seven out of nine home games that followed a road loss. Expect the Houston defense to be focused and intense on their home floor in a bounce-back spot against Memphis. Take the Cougars. Our second spot on our the top three NCCAB list for tonight is Kansas State vs Iowa State, under 126.5. K-State played the game tightly through the first half, with the game tied at 34 at intermission. The number 10 Bears got rolling in the second half, however, and broke out on a 19-4 run out of the locker room that proved to be the difference. K-State would never get closer than six points the rest of the way, in taking its eighth loss in conference play. The loss wasted another outstanding effort from Nigel Pack. Pack scored 31 points on 10 of 19 field goals, including 4 of 9 from 3 PT range. He has scored in double figures in 20 of 21 games this season, and this was his second 30-point game of the season. Pack, unfortunately, was the only bright spot for a Cougar team that shot just 38% from the field. The Cougars were also out-rebounded 38-31 and committed 15 turnovers on the night. The under is the recommended play in this game, as both defenses have a good chance of slowing down the opposing offenses. With all due respect, it doesn't take much to slow down the Iowa State offense right now, as they are currently the worst offense in Big 12 play. The Cyclones have scored at least 1.0 points per possession in just four of their 11 conference games this season. Kansas State's defense might be the second worst in the Big 12, but the Wildcats still rank as a top 40 defense overall in Ken Palm's adjusted defensive efficiency. K-State is averaging just over 67 points per game this season and has a plus 3.4 point differential this season. They only shoot 41% from the field overall but are able to hold opponents to just 40% shooting. The Cougars are an above-average perimeter defense, holding opponents to just 26% shooting from long range. They can, however, be manhandled on the boards with a minus 1.3 rebound differential this season. To offset their struggles in the paint, the Cougars try to get out in passing lanes, averaging over 7 steals per game and forcing over 13 turnovers per contest. On the other end, Iowa State's defense has not been as good in conference play as it was during the non-conference portion of the season, but their defense still ranks ninth overall. 
They're also an elite pick and roll defense, which is essentially the entirety of the Kansas State offense. Like Iowa State, Kansas State's offense ranks outside the top 100 in adjusted offensive efficiency, so we're surely in for a defensive struggle in this matchup. With so many great games on Saturday, this is probably one to bet the under and simply check the score at the end of the game. Our first spot on our the top 3 NCCAB list for tonight goes to DePaul vs Providence, Providence win minus 9.5. The Blue Demons and the Friars will square off for the second time this season. The first meeting was a 70-53 victory by the Friars, who simply dominated from the opening tip, holding DePaul to a dreadful 29.8% shooting from the field, all while shooting 53.3% from three-point range as a team with four different players in double-figure scoring numbers. More recently the Blue Demons have rattled off two consecutive wins over Xavier and Georgetown, and this will arguably be their biggest challenge of the year as they will look to win without their leading scorer Javen Freeman Liberty, who will miss his seventh straight game with a groin injury. The Friars have not been blowing teams out at home, but they will win this game rather easily. DePaul has won their last two games in a row, and their offense was solid in those games, but they had lost their previous four in a row, putting up just 51.8 ppg over that stretch. The Blue Demons have averaged just 64.0 ppg on the road and Providence has allowed 64.2 ppg at home. The Providence offense has not been great overall but they have averaged 74.6 ppg at home and the Blue Demons have allowed 72.6 page in lead play. Providence needs to keep winning and after DePaul recently won on the road against Xavier, the Friars will not be taking them lightly here. Lastly, the Friars are 13-3 at TS in their last 16 games versus a team with a winning straight up record. Providence has been the most impressive team in the Big East, compiling a 10-1 conference record and currently running a seven-game win streak into the home stretch of the regular season. During this stretch the Friars are shooting 38% from three-point range, and the emergence of Jared Bynum has been huge, as he is averaging 15.4 points per game off the bench during the win streak, and he scored 32 points in the win over Georgetown on Sunday. Providence is undefeated at home this season and I believe that the absence of Freeman Liberty will be seriously missed in this game for DePaul. Providence has the 52nd ranked scoring defense in the country, holding opponents to only 64.2 points per game. I expect a tight first half, with Providence tightening the screws on defense the second half to blow the game open. Take the Friars. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory. 